the tomatoes do have the cilia, yeah. and if you plant the them, cilia, the little hairs along it's the- It's called cilia? Cilia. Uh, and the tomato cilia are called cilia because they're so silly. Yeah. So when you, 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 what? It's so bad. It's so bad. Hi everybody. Hi. Hi, so uh, this morning we are gonna be working on seed starts, which is a really, really important part of our gardening plan. Uh, we've been doing this pretty much continuously since February, uh, starting seeds and then replanting them into our soil. Uh, and it's uh, something that we have learned a lot about since then, but we're still kind of learning and continuing to learn. So the reasons why we're planting seeds in pots, it's first to have a good head start uh, after the last frost. And uh, second, it's uh, for rotation. As soon as we harvest something, we plant something else. Oh, well, that was real short. Nice. Woohoo! Oh, it worked for the first time. So we're gonna go back and look at where we were back in February when we first started doing seed starts. And we're actually gonna uh, critique our former selves and figure out what we got right, what we got wrong, and what we could maybe keep improving on. Uh, so if you'll come with us, we're gonna go explore uh, our seed starting journey. Our seed starting journey is only just starting. Just starting. So Jed, what are we doing today? Uh, today we are planting some more seedlings. And I am currently putting a seed starting mix into our little seed starting trays. Seed starting mix is super important. It's really, really light. If you come in here, I can show you. It's like a really spongy texture. Boom, 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 boom. It's also not terribly nutritious because the seed actually has everything it needs in order to sprout. Uh, once it does sprout, we'll transfer them into soil that's a little denser, a little bit more nutrient rich, so that they can continue to grow. So I just finished spraying bleach on our seed starter mix, which is really, really good for killing all of the plants that we want to raise. So I just finished spraying water. This is water, H2O. What we're planning to do is spray down that top layer, and then we're also going to use some wicking to bring water up from the bottom of the tray. Okay, so that one, pretty good. Uh, we still do something very similar using seed starter mix. Uh, however, we do it a little bit differently now. So uh, today we just uh, take a bowl, we put the seed uh, starter uh, mix inside of the bowl and uh, to make sure it's uh, moist enough, we're gonna add water then. And uh, after that, we're gonna fill the pots. Also, we are still debating on uh, what using uh, as a seed starter. We wanna uh, try to avoid pit must in the future because uh, it's not a renewable resource. Uh, so we want to go with the coconut coir, but we need to read also uh, about it a little bit more. So overall, that one, I'd say we're starting off great. So, Sylvian, what are we doing here today? We say hi first. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi, guys. So remember the videos when you saw us when we planted seeds? So they grew up when they grew from uh, uh, out of the seedling. They have just two leaves, that's the cotyledon. And then you have a third or a third and a fourth leaf that start to grow in between. So when those just pop, we have to move them in bigger pots. Here we have a four by four. And we fill these uh, pots. Uh, Salim used to work at a greenhouse, so he filled me in on a little technique, which is just basically to fill the pots up completely to the top and then tap them down a little bit. And they sort of settle with a nice little kind of half inch lip on the outside. So we are gonna be using a little bit of gentle fertilizer here. Uh, really important that we don't use anything too strong that's gonna kill these things by uh, overwhelming them. So what are our numbers? Four, six, two. That's a nice kind of generally low number. We're trying not to overwhelm them with nitrogen. If we put like raw fertilizer in there, there's a good chance we would uh, burn the roots and hurt the plants. I can't believe I'm saying this, but uh, I think we're two for two. Great, great. We're doing so well. I bet we're gonna rewatch the rest of this entire video and just be like, oh my God, we did so amazing. We knew everything back in February. We were so smart. 
crushing it, crushing it, crushing it. No mistakes to come. No mistakes. So guys, now I'm gonna explain how I remove the, uh, the sproutings from this. So what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm scooping on the edge and then I'm gonna pull it like this. And the reason why we do that is because if, if we're trying to just pull one uh, of the seedlings, of the sprouting, we may break a lot of roots and we want to save as much roots as possible. So here, um, what I do is just shaking to remove the extra starting soil mix. I don't need it. And this is a tomato Kellogg's breakfast. I'm very excited. They grow big, like one pound, uh, uh, the tomato, and it's orange and it's very sweet. So now, after a few months doing this, I am definitely less gentle with those uh, uh, seedlings. Right now, I just like scoop it directly and uh, I really uh, shake them well. Uh, they can take it and I separate them uh, very fast. And after that, I replant them and they regrow very fast. So, uh, so a rookie mistake that we made was being too gentle with our, our seed starts uh, that we can kind of rough them up a little bit. We can like yeah, knock them around. Bit. You may make them this a little is, bit this stronger. Is you, this is how you punch a That's person or a plant. We don't punch, a, we don't punch our plants. Our so plants. that one we would rate uh, good. Yeah. Good. Good. I'm gonna pop them in our four inch pots. Uh, I use, a, this is like a classic dibber just to kind of like open it up here. You can use a pen, you can use your finger. So I'm gonna take my half teaspoon measurer. It doesn't have to be exact, but roughly half teaspoon. And we're just gonna put that in there. This is some nice light fertilizer. And then this is kind of important. We kind of mix it in at the bottom. So it's not just pure fertilizer, but it's sort of mixed in with all that soil. Um, now I've got a nice little hole here for my roots. And I'm just gonna close it up a little bit before I'm not done yet. Cause I'm gonna do another half teaspoon on top here of our little gentle fertilizer. And then I'm gonna kind of mix that in a little bit with our soil, and we're just gonna kind of push it down, compress it down. Oh God, okay. Well, that's hard to watch. So uh, <laughs> that was definitely one of the biggest mistakes we made when we first started doing uh, seeding back in February was not mixing in our uh, the fertilizer mix uh, more thoroughly into the soil, leaving it too close to the plants. Unfortunately, we did lose some plants as a result of that. Uh, I am very sad about it. That was some very bad, uh, bad Ooh. advice. Okay, we don't have to boo ourselves. We were yeah, learning. Yeah, I was just booing you. I mean, okay. not booing myself. Uh, the last and most important thing when you're working with a bunch of seedlings that all look exactly the same is to always make sure to label them very quickly so you don't forget what's what. This was the hardest part, but we got it right. Yeah! Labeling! Great! It is crazy complex putting all of these different plants uh, into four inch pots. And uh, fun fact, for those of you who haven't gardened before, little baby plants all look exactly the same. Their, their first cotyledon, the, the, the leaves, look exactly the same. It's like babies in a hospital maternity ward. You just don't know which baby is yours. You gotta label that baby properly. So that may have looked like a very innocuous little clip of us just watering our starts in the greenhouse. Unfortunately, that was another big mistake. That would be a bad one. One of the rookie mistakes about uh, seedling, how to lose seedlings, is the watering. If it's uh, really damp, uh, the, the roots are gonna grow them very fast and we, we lost our seedlings because of that. And because it's cold outside, especially during the night, uh the the water didn't evaporate well and now when we do water we rely more on wicking so basically placing the pots into water and letting it wick up the soil which is a nice way to make sure they don't get over watered they're just taking as much water as they need but not all hope is lost because a lot of those seed starts that we showed you in that video from back in february are currently growing right behind us in this garden. We have zucchinis and tomatoes and eggplants and peppers. And next year, hopefully 100% of what we grow here will all be from seeds that we planted ourselves.
<laughs> Kissing our seedlings goodnight. <laughs>